You know, when you have a quote-unquote platform like mine, it's easy to get bogged down in negativity. When you spend a lot of time talking about bad movies or bad TV shows and explaining why you think they're bad, it's easy to find yourself becoming more and more cynical and judgmental and, well, that's just no way to live. And sure, it's fine to every now and then watch something that's really atrocious and then just violently rip it to shreds, but it's important to make sure you find that thin line between the bad and the good. On the one hand, if you expose yourself to only the worst kinds of media, you'll find that you're always going to be, like, overtly critical and expecting to find the tiniest flaws in everything you see. But on the flip side of that, if you only watch and only talk about the good stuff, it becomes harder and harder to tell what's actually, well, you know, good. And I've been on both sides of this dilemma in the past, so that's why I find it's important to ride that thin line between the two. You gotta dip your toe in the warm and the cold water so you can say that you've effectively swam in both. And since my last video got me a little bit heated as I talked about a truly abysmal corporate product disguised as a movie, I want to switch it up. I want to talk about something I truly, truly love with all of my heart. I want to talk about... Um, okay. Not quite sure where that came from. But anyway, as I was saying, I want to talk about... Oh my god, what the hell is going on? Is that just gonna happen every time I try to say... Anyway, let's talk about... That thing. So to really break down my intense love for Invincible, I want to start at the beginning. Let's flash back to about four years ago, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't really feel like a long time, but to a teenager, that's an eternity. So four years ago, I was chatting with a couple of friends online, and we were all talking about whatever comics we were reading then. I remember someone was talking about how much they were in love with Tom King's Mr. Miracle Run, and I was talking about my deep love for The Walking Dead book. Then one of my friends remarked that if I was a huge fan of The Walking Dead, I should check out Robert Kirkman's superhero book called Invincible. I remember he showed me this panel, and it was the first time I ever laid eyes on what is now my favorite superhero, and I remember my first thought being, Jesus, what an ugly costume. But I picked up the first volume of the book at whatever bookstore, and it took me no time at all to immediately fall in love. If I remember correctly, I think I read every issue they had published in the span of about two weeks, becoming more and more obsessed with every page I turned. I read, and I read, and I read, and suddenly, the book was over. I then broke down in big manly tears. In my defense, the book was very good. Anyway, so over the course of four years after that, I came to appreciate Invincible more and more. I reread it many times, I bought the full series in compendium format, and then I tried my hardest to turn others onto this character and his series. That, however, was the hard part, cause who the fuck reads books anymore, right? I used a variety of methods to draw their interest with intense praise of the series, which I know for a fact got annoying after a while. I appealed to those who like good stories by telling them that the series starts out as a campy, cliched superhero coming-of-age story, but quickly throws all of that out the window in favor of a unique approach to superhero storytelling that matures through the years with its readers. For anyone who was just a big fan of comic book art, I showed them the development of the art style throughout the book and how it only gets more and more beautiful as the story develops and becomes more mature. And at one point, I got so desperate that I essentially said, hey, you want to see some super gory superhero fight scenes? This is the book for you! Oh, and uh, trigger warning for some gore. You ready? Oh, 
Oh man, this is gratuitous violence just the best thing in the world? Anyway, sadly, none of my attempts to recruit people into the Invincible fandom really worked, so outside of the two or three people I would talk to about it online, I was really the only hardcore fan of Invincible I knew, and for a while I was okay with that. I liked having my own unique little thing. It felt like I had Mark Grayson and his universe all to myself, and I could escape into those books whenever I needed to. And then, everything changed. With the announcement of the animated series, I felt a healthy mixture of excitement and skepticality. On the one hand, I would never turn down the chance for more Invincible content. But on the other hand, a lot of graphic novel series have been brought into the public eye before, and while some have done great, others have been just okay, and others have done less than great. But when I heard that Robert Kirkman himself was heading up the project, I remained cautiously optimistic, and I'm happy to say that the Invincible animated series didn't disappoint in the slightest. The series is a perfect doorway for those looking to get into the universe. It's approachable, it's charming, it has an all-star cast, and it's engaging as hell to boot. But despite being a great introduction to newer fans, it also has a lot to offer people like me, who have been a part of this for a little bit longer. Even though I've amassed an immense amount of knowledge about pretty much every major and minor story beat in the comic, this show still managed to throw me for a loop every now and then by changing things around to better fit the pacing, and even adding things that help flesh out some of the minor characters from the comics. Truly this show is the breath of fresh air that this universe and its characters deserved. It has so much going for it, it was almost impossible to find any flaws. However, I did just say almost. I think the thing that bugged me the most about the Invincible series was the way that it handled its title cards. In the first episode, it was a charming and campy way to cap off the ending of the story, sort of like that final line in Age of Ultron. However, as the season progressed, the title cards became more and more jarring. Sometimes it would cut in the middle of a perfectly normal sentence, and it would just disrupt the flow of the entire scene. Me? I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem real. That could have been my mom, putting my dad in one of those holes, or me. This could happen to the guard. It means that none of us are... And once or twice it came out of nowhere, like 20 minutes into the episode. That's what people say. Are you a good guy? I... Uh, What's his name? Him? He calls himself... I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, but towards the end of the show, I found myself expecting it, and I disliked it more and more each time. To me, it just seems like the writers are restricting themselves by having to find a way to fit the word invincible into the script of every episode. Some other minor details I noticed were that sometimes the background music from the soundtrack felt a bit forced and didn't gel well with the scene, and other times the animation of the show was a bit too choppy and stiff. But all in all, this series has done exactly what I was hoping it would. More and more people are talking about it, comic sales are up, and this story is finally getting the love that I feel it's deserved for such a long time. And who knows, maybe in a few years these characters will be a household name. I mean, if Marvel Studios can take obscure characters like Shang-Chi or the Guardians of the Galaxy and create a lasting legacy for them, who's to say Amazon can't do the same for... I said who's to say Amazon can't do the same thing for... Oh come on, now that I actually want you to, you're just gonna ignore me every time I try to say... 